Mobile learning has its unique affordances, challenges, limitations, and capabilities. When designing for mobile learning, keep it in mind and also look very, very carefully at these four aspects of the design for mobile learning. The content, the delivery methods and tools, interaction sharing and communication methods, as well as the design of learning and teaching activities. Let's first look at the content design. Here are a few recommendations that you should consider when thinking about the design of content for mobile learning. First of all, use multimedia whenever appropriate. In certain contexts, for example, when your students are using only smartphones, text-based communication um, between students might be the only solution. However, when you are teaching languages, for example, you would like to include a little bit of audio, video to support the understanding and the comprehension of what the students are listening to. It is also suggested that you chunk up your, the content that you're creating, uh, that you put bite-sized modules and elements together in a connected way that actually enables seamless continuous learning. However, also lets the learner pause whenever it's convenient and appropriate for him or her. Include access to existing content and resources that obviously are validated by an expert. Also include activities and resources that are both required and optional. Students often go outside of the uh, structure of the course looking for additional answers. It would be nice to include some pointers and point the students to additional resources. And once again, personalize. Personal, include personally relevant um, content that students can customize sometimes themselves. They can customize it to their own individual diverse needs and then can access it at any time that they need it or share it if they prefer to do so. It's a good idea to um, include reminders, notifications and updates for students to help them a little bit with the time management. And also if you can select appropriate educational apps that are contingent to learning and that actually aim at the learning outcome that you're designing for. And what type of interaction do you want to incorporate in your design? You might be looking at individual activities, even behaviorist uh, type of learning where students are completing a vocabulary assessment, for example. But outside of that situation, quite often you are looking into um, involving some kind of interaction between students. Um, it could be formal or informal interaction. It could be interaction via their mobile devices that is combined with um, with face-to-face uh, -face activities where students are together collecting, capturing data. So sometimes students are actually communicating and, and completing their tasks and activities face-to-face, -face, but in the case of mobile learning, most of the time, they are either learning at a distance or they are communicating from two different uh, places and time and space. According to what the needs are, make sure to include um, the appropriate channel and medium of communication. You could be using text-based chats, you could be using vlogs. Vlogs are basically blogs um, that are using your voice and uh, language learning students actually really take uh, well to this type of uh, vlog based activities. Um, you could be using synchronous very, uh, or asynchronous types of activities, uh, for example, phone calls versus um, the email communication. And uh, yes, I recommend that students build their own artifacts, share their own uh, artifacts. Um, you need some kind of an exchange uh, forum, um, a tool, and design that enable students to ask questions, share their resources, evaluate each other, support each other. It's very important that involve this type of um, support from the community of practice.